Dask is a library for parallel computing in Python. Dask integrates with lots of different libraries and can be used at massive scale. However, for this video, we're gonna keep things very simple. We're gonna operate on one machine, my machine here in my apartment, uh, and we're gonna just parallelize general purpose Python code, just parallel for loops and that kind of thing. If you haven't seen Dask before, this is a great place to start. They give you the foundation of what Dask does. If you have seen Dask before, maybe with another Dask library like Dask DataFrame or XArray or Prefect or PyTorch, this library will give you a better understanding of what's happening under the hood, and also maybe will give you some other ideas about how you can use Dask for other workflows. So to start, I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna create a Dask cluster just on my laptop. Uh, so the client object, if you give it the address of some remote massive cluster, it'll connect to that cluster. If you give it nothing, it'll just create some processes locally on your machine in about a second. That's what just happened here. I'm gonna go ahead and click this button so that I've got some diagnostics now in my JupyterLab environment. Now for this example, we're gonna take some very basic Python code, three functions, increment, decrement, and add. And they do some trivial amount of work, but they're also gonna call sleep just to simulate you know, more work. Uh, these are stand-ins for functions that you might have on your machine. Maybe you know, load file or process data or scrape website or something like that. I'm gonna keep this very simple, but you should sort of be imagining what this is in your, in your case. These are normal Python functions. I can run them here in this notebook or in a script. It's just Python code. And here I'm gonna run these things uh, in a for loop. So I'm gonna call for 20 pieces of input data. I'm gonna call increment on that data. It's gonna be a result. I'm gonna call decrement on that result and I'm gonna append the results. So that's gonna take about 20 seconds. Let's go and let's parallelize that code with Dask. And we'll see how, how long that takes. So I've got this client object from before up top. Right? And that client object has many different capabilities. But the simplest and most powerful capability is the ability to submit a Python function to run somewhere else on Dask. So we're gonna submit this function increment on X. So instead of calling it locally, we're gonna call it remotely. That's gonna give us this result object now won't be a concrete result. That'll be a future or a promise or a pointer to some remote data that will exist at some point. We're gonna call client.submit again on decrement on that future result. And this was kind of chain the, the tasks together. Then when we're done, we're going to gather up those results. Uh, this will sort of wait until they're all done, it'll block, and we'll gather the results locally. So let's run that. So my sequential code took 20 seconds. Let's see how long the parallel code takes. It took about three seconds, which makes sense. I got about eight cores, 20 divided by eight is about three. On the upper right here, we're seeing uh, some nice information about what Dask is doing. Each line here corresponds to one core of my computer. Every green box is a call to the increment function. Every purple box, a call to the decrement function. See, so Dask is calling increment and decrement and increment and decrement, et cetera. Now that we've got some more, you know, compute power, let's, we can sort of, you know, scale this up a little bit. And Dask can go ahead and it can use all of the hardware on my machine. Now, this is a great way to use Dask. This sort of embarrassingly parallel for loop is really common. Dask here is a good stand-in for the multiprocessing module, for the threading module. It's a great way to just use all of the cores on your laptop in a very common situation. But Dask can also get way more complex. It can handle way more sophisticated workloads. Let's see an example. So I've got now these sort of 128 different numbers scattered across all my little Dask processes. Let's add them up. But let's add them up pairwise. So we're going to add every neighboring pair. So we had a 128 numbers. We'll add every pair. So there's now 64. And we'll keep doing that. So we have 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So we've got this one number left. Kind of a complicated algorithm, but we can write it pretty easily with Python, right? So we're going to do that with Dask and Python together. So while length of results is greater than 1, I say results is we're going to submit the add function to run on results of i and results of i plus one. So this is sort of like a like neighboring, uh, neighboring results uh, for i in range zero to length of results, uh, uh, steps, steps of two. So I could have written this in normal Python code. This is just a normal Python algorithm. But by adding in this sort of client.submit function at the right time, I turn it into a parallel algorithm. So then this results is a list of length zero. We can get the, you know, the one element result and call result on that, which will give us the concrete result back. Before I hit run on this, I'm gonna make up a different Dask chart 
which will show us the task graph that Dask constructs as we are running our code. And that's going to be fun. We're going to see what Dask thinks we're asking for. Yeah, so what you can see here, that sort of, that tree reduction, that sort of taking everything down by a factor of two every time, is really well represented here. This is what Dask sees of what we've asked for. And you can see Dask sort of marching through that tree, through that task graph, executing functions, uh, keeping data in memory, releasing it as fast as it can. And the top you see Dask doing that work, right? Uh, again, the sort of inks are green, uh, the ads are new, the sort of blue color. Also, these are little red bars. Those are transferring, right? Dask has to transfer some data between processes in order to make all of this work. So this gives you a sense for how Dask can be used for very simple algorithms like this one, but also very complex ones. It allows you, a Python developer, to kind of write whatever algorithm you want to and allow Dask to parallelize that. This is what all of the other Dask libraries do internally. If you use something like Dask DataFrame, you know, the Pandas developers and the Dask developers have worked together and written a lot of code like this that allows Dask data frame to write a very high level API, but underneath the hood is doing a lot of sort of very complicated and sophisticated uh, Python algorithms, all parallelized and executed with Dask. As a final example here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, start a cluster. So we're run this not on my local machine, but on many more machines. So maybe we'll ask for 50 machines with, um, We'll just choose the default. Uh, and then we'll go cluster client equals cluster to get, get client. And so here what I'm doing is I'm going to um, run not on one machine on my laptop. I'm now going to scale out DAS to run on 50 machines on the cloud. And once that's done, I'll be able to uh, run this job at a much, much higher data volume. Uh, much, I can sort of change these numbers up here from 128 maybe to 1,024, uh, just to sort of have a bit more fun. Now this is using Coiled, and Coiled is a, is a cluster manager service, so a lot of the DAS maintainers work at the company Coiled, and Coiled is an easy way to, to get a large cluster uh, running on the cloud with exactly the same environment that you have locally. Right now what Coiled is doing is it's looking at my local Python environment. It's scraping all the DAS versions, all the Python version, you know, Pandas, PyTorch, or libraries I have, and it's creating an environment for me to run on the cloud. Uh, then it'll provision those 50 machines for me. So it'll take about two minutes. So here we go. We're, we've sort of built the sort of software environment I'm gonna run. Now we're provisioning 50 machines. In about a minute, I'm gonna have all those machines waiting for me, uh, sitting on Amazon. I'm gonna fast forward the video here just by a minute, and it'll be able to sort of run this at large scale and see how that feels. Great, so these machines are coming up now. A lot of them downloaded their software environment. They're becoming ready. So we get most of the machines will be ready to go. Cool, my workers have arrived. I'm gonna switch now my dashboard from my, my local cluster to my cluster in the cloud. You see all the dashboard diagnostics pages are resetting. So now let's bring up these sort of charts back. Let's go back up to our code before. Right, so I changed this from being 128 to 1024. And so now I'm gonna run that exact same code but now rather than just eight lines up here, I've got you know, hundreds of lines. I can sort of, I can run this code at massive scale and get a lot more performance. Um, Dask is still submitting the work, but we're gonna see the sort of the tree structure fall out pretty soon. So again, this is giving you a sense for how Dask is able to um, paralyze your work locally on a single machine, and then how it's able to take that same work and scale it out in a very comfortable, very easy way. Using technologies like Coil, it's easy to get cloud infrastructure to do, make that scale out possible. I've done my work, excellent, I've got my results. Now that I'm done, I can just shut down my cluster. Right, so that whole computation cost me you know, less than a dollar. But I was able to accelerate things very easily and very quickly. So that's it on this example. If you're interested, we're gonna have a couple more, a couple more quick examples that'll be linked here. If you wanna see this same kind of parallel for loop use case, but in a more real world example, check out the matplotlib archive example. We're gonna process three terabytes of PDFs sitting on the cloud uh, to analyze how often the library matplotlib was used in scientific articles. Or if you'd like to see how Dask can be used with other libraries, check out the Dask data frame Uber Lyft example. Uh, that example is gonna show you how you can use Dask with pandas to do sort of very large scale data processing with the panda style API. 
That's it. Thanks for your time.